The rain, falling like a melody, makes everything undante. Oh my gosh. Now let's put it in the bag. I'm going to put it in the bag. I'm going to put it in the bag. I'm going to put it in the bag. What is this? It's a bag. It's a bag. It's a bag. <웃음> 이중에 좀 이상한데? 어, 야, 낙지 한입 하실래요? 대박 낙지가. Today we're making sujebi, which is another seafood soup with noodles. <웃음> Jin's fake laugh just embodies how I felt about making this recipe. Oh my gosh. So the boys like their broth thick and thin. Sugar and Jin started out making kalguksu, but because Sugar couldn't cut the noodles right, they decided to make sujebi, which is more of a hand-pulled noodle, uh, which is more flat and round. So that's what they went with, which is fine. You know, when you're cooking, you gotta improvise sometimes. So the book says, dishes that offer both broth and noodles together like ramen, pho, and udon can be found all over the world. Sujebi is another example of such a soup dish, except it contains unusually shaped pieces of dough made with wheat flour instead of noodles. Sujebi is the name of both these dough pieces and the dish itself. Sujebi pieces are bite-sized, one to one and a half inches, and tend to be round and flat. Mine were not round and flat, they were flat. They look somewhat similar to pasta shells, but their texture is totally different. And it would be, because in this case, it's fresh pasta, right? I don't know why I cut this chili on a paper towel. Wait, that's so ridiculous. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to get the, all the heat onto the cutting board. It's like, it's a paper towel. Obviously it's going to get heat on there. So I was just like, okay, get rid of the paper towel. That's ridiculous. And these aren't actually that spicy. It's, I don't even think it's as spicy as a jalapeno. And I don't think jalapenos are spicy. Anyway, so what we're making is we're making a spicy soy sauce, which goes on the sujebi if you want it more spicy because there is absolutely no spice in this soup. So I actually made the sujebi dough before I did everything else that you just saw because this has to rest for at least 30 minutes in the refrigerator. So basically it's just three cups of flour, a cup of water, and a third of a teaspoon of salt. That's it. Super, super simple, basic. And I used my KitchenAid with the dough hook to mix it because I wasn't gonna do it by hand. I'm not that committed. I'm a little bit committed, but not that. And again, because of where I live, I have to add oh. more water because my flour is very, very dry. So we needed to add more moisture to this. So I added a little bit more water. I think you just gauge that, just look at it and be like, okay, we don't want a super sticky dough. We want just right, a little bit of tackiness and adjust your water content or your flour content accordingly. Super simple. So 
So once it's done kneading, I put it into a plastic Ziploc bag. I'm gonna zip it up and I'm gonna put it in the fridge to let it rest for at least half an hour. So the dough has rested in the refrigerator for at least half an hour while it's doing everything else. So now we're gonna roll it out. Make sure that you take a little time to play in the flour. I love the feel of flour on my hands. It's so much fun. It's a slightly easier getting it out of the bag than Jin's time getting his dough out of the bag. Now it may look like I'm just fooling around with the dough, but I'm feeling it for its bounciness, making sure that it's the right texture that we want for this. Now I'm just playing with it. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but that's our cat and dog's water bowl going. It's like this little waterfall that the dogs and cats drink from. But yeah. <laughs> Both Sugar and I were having a rough time with the dough. I was like, this is ridiculous, this small um, dumpling rolling pin to d use this with. So eventually I just switched it out because I was like, no, I can't be doing this. See? Yeah. Here you go. More leverage. It's bigger. It has a little bit more weight on it. Easier to roll out the dough. Here's my pot that I realized was too small to cook in, but we're gonna start out with it. We're adding the clams in first. The clams were actually cooked already. So the reason that they're open is because they're cooked, not because they're spoiled. Um, yeah, no one got sick eating this. Not that I ate it, but my sister and my husband did not get sick eating this. Ah, uh, the fresh smell of seafood in my home. So now that we have brought this up to a boil, we're gonna skim off all the scum. Skim off the scum, that's amazing. It's a great phrase, skim the scum. Then we're gonna add the vegetables. So we've got the zucchini and the onion and the Korean leek. And after that, we are going to add in our shrimp. And it's going to be shell and tail on just because the shell is going to impart more seafoody flavor into the broth, which, if you enjoy seafood, is amazing. Or so I've been told. Oh! <laughs> 
And this is where I realized that my pot was way too small because I still have to add the sujebi or the pasta dough into this. Yeah, we need to switch out pots. So I'm putting it in a pot that's not cute, but it works. Jin did an awesome job adding the dough into the sujebi broth. Um, me not so much. I definitely rolled out my dough thin. However, it was too thin. So when I started pulling it to put pieces into the broth, uh, it was way too thin. So if I had read the book completely, uh, I would have read that a lot of people cut out the dough with cookie cutters so that you could have cute shapes like hearts and stars and perfectly round circles, which I did not do. And so my dough was just like very, very thin. It cooked really quickly though, so whatever. So again, we have to skim the scum off of the top, which I was trying to just press down into it because I was picking up a lot of the garlic pieces that were put in there and I didn't want to do that. I wanted that flavor in the soup to stay. And so that's why I was pressing kind of down the way I did. And then we're going to mix, mix, mix. My house smelled so bad, so bad. I mean, it smelled like seafood. For some people, that's not bad. For me, it was. I had my well, windows open, I had the air going, so and I now. sprayed my house like every 20 minutes with Febreze until the smell was so, gone. Yeah. 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 Jimin, heart, mind, and soul, we are connected. That is exactly how I felt about this. I'm just mixing this around. My husband and my sister tried it and they liked it. So good for them. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and comment the word shrimp. Okay. Love you. Bye.